Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting program. The cast may host Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda, Hero Strike Defender of the Fatherland, off here to an exciting one versus one on Simwaski Winter between the South Africa Red Wings, finding of the King and Country, the Commonwealth. The 11th Introduction Charts for clearing out this area, helped by naughty German elements under the command of I Hito. Rolling out here with the Wehrmacht, the 12th SS Panzer Division, Hitler Jugend, here with Assault Support, Elite Troops, Lightning War. Triple Infantry versus Red Wings, Commando, Royal Artillery and Royal Engineers. Opting in here for a double section start versus Ahidus MD42 Grenadiers start here. Conventional start there for both players so far. Red Wings of course known for his more offbeat strategies and tactics. And certainly novel approaches to the game. Which certainly makes him a charm to watch in many cases. Pa section moving up here, Pioneers rushing for the house as well. There you go, in this case the section makes a hit of the Pioneers, forcing a hit into an immediate retreat. And so any highlights, one thing I always suggest here in Simoski, be it winter or otherwise. Take this way. It's a lot harder to lock down and it's less dependent just getting this into this house. Whereas with this side, you know, again, it is. I personally probably call this the clown corridor because if you're moving down here most of the time, you're a bit of a one. But we'll see how this works. I mean, you can still pull through, but you just, you just make it so much more difficult for yourself, I personally find here. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're allies or the Germans, you generally just benefit a lot more of your north pushing down the other side. We got section occupying the house. If we get a machine gun moving up here for Red Wings, he's going to put pressure in. It's just make it harder for our hitter to move through. Now, hitter so far is just feeding into Red Wings, essentially. Filling up with a very early mortar here. So, again, he's determined to blast through no matter the cost and no matter the consequences. A hitter shall I find no, or does not want any way to be barred by the Tommies. But there you go, Vic setting up here. That's going to further put pressure on our too. It's going to further lock it down. It's just going to mean he's just going to end up wasting a lot of time here if he doesn't switch his overall axis of approach or axis of attack here. Because right now, this is just, you know, going to be a meat grind. And that's not necessarily what the Wehrmacht excels at when they're attacking. Like defending, they can usually do quite well, you know, forcing their opponent to a meat grinder. But on the attack, they're really terrible at it. So in this regard, what Ahito needs to do is actually attack elsewhere, where it's a lot harder for his opponent to pin him down. But uh, so far, Ahito is very much committed to this approach. Very much committed. And this is going to allow Red Wings to get more resources here than Ahito in the first few moments of the game. I mean, we're already at 7 versus 23. Red Wings following up with the third section. Bombarding the house here. House roof has already caved in uh, a bit there. Single news got that I think for Ahito. And he pops back in. Don't worry, chaps, it's all safe. Oh, good lord. Stop doing that, you German bastards. Filling up another Vickers. It's a triple section, double Vickers build. Definitely a bit of rarity from the Brits. Sort of mirrors, I suppose, the, one of the more typical German openings. Triple Grenadines into double MU42. But as you can see here, I hit was not exactly making a lot of progress. And meanwhile, Red Wings is seizing most of the map. So you can sort of begin seeing in here. This is one reason, again, why a lot of people don't like starting a North Samoski. In part because they keep doing this. And they rarely you know, attack through here, where again, it's a lot harder to just pin you know, the opponent down. But here, it's really easy. So I'm, you know, I'm a bit surprised again. He was not, you know, committing to this to such a degree here, instead of just, you know, pushing elsewhere. And now we can see that Red Wings moving up behind his lines, harassing, cutting off territory there. Triple gun is one four two one more tier five here too. Red Wings so far is going to be able to take a hit easily here by Hito. That's definitely going to be a problem for Hito. That is definitely going to be a problem. Because you really don't want the Brits to take ahead of you because they have the best ability to take up and of any of the other factions. Simply due to low attack costs, plus, of course, cheap and very, well, sort of very straightforward taking as well there. But he's really intent on taking this into this. He's not so focused on the fuel. That tends to be, you know, a bit of a mistake some Mammoth players can commit to. He's basically committing to heavy tier 1 here with a 4th gun of escort, which might mean he's going to try and skip tier 2, which can be a bit risky versus the bits, particularly in this situation because they're going to hit you with ACs possibly and if you don't have a pack 40, you're in for a very rough time. Well, rougher than you're already having in these circumstances. But you can see slowly pressing here, trying to push Red Wings out of the village, trying to get that fuel point there. More good ideas that I'm for here too. Shifting away here from the east, leaving that for Red Wings to secure alongside the rest of the 11th armor, infantry, I mean, not armored. Gonna do something in here, occupying the church, trying to turn the surrounding environments against Red Wings here. Bolstering up here, Red Wings commits to that. Well, not 
too early really, not too late either. I would say it doesn't commit to it as fast as most British players would have done it. Usually gone like after having three sections, they would bolster right then and there. But right wing did wait a bit. In fact, he take up first before actually bolstering. Which is a bit of a rare move here. I hear to taking up. I mean, he might want to rush to three, but he can't get away with it. He has to go for like to make a nice company, I think. Modify here. Blind find doesn't know where the Vickers is. Right wing's here playing causes Vickers aggressively. Leaving a hit of a bit flabbergasted, but there goes section. Of gonna do is to repulse it. And he's almost got a fuel pond connected there. Almost, but even then, he is so far behind the fuel compared to our, hit, our Red Wings. This is gonna be pretty much a tall order for him. Um, I hit it to have an easy time with Red Wings filling up there with sappers to help clear up mines and, of course, support those brave boys at the front with other things. What other things? You know, your sub machine guns. Ow. But don't we have to get close with those? Oh, well, yeah. Doesn't that hurt? Well, it hurts them more if you don't get shot. Oh, right. Section there, pushed back with the Gunners in the far east. Biggest thing about here, Medic Banger up there for Aihito. And I'd like to make a nice company as of yet, but at least he's now secure control of the center. It took him a lot of effort, a lot of time, and theoretically could easily get punished here by Red Wings. But he's managed to gain control of both few points secure there. But that took quite a bit of time. And I'm not entirely sure again this is not going to have some kind of unfortunate consequences for Hito down the road. But we'll see, we'll see. He is going for the like to make a nice company. He's going to have to go for some packs at the very least. Marks one to consider some punts going to be a mines being laid down here. Now he's doing it at the very edge of the point A because it's a good spot, but also because it only gives line of sight right close to the center. Like, the strategic point doesn't give line of sight to the very edges of the points. And like, if you do it here, your opponent shouldn't be able to see you actually laying down the mine. So that's a little neat detail there. Section's rising ahead there. Sam's on the MG42, which fires back here. So we're up here as well in the form of the pyrotechnic supplies there for Red Wings. Giving access to the 25 pounder guns. He'll show those hands what it's about with these guns. Water being pushed back here in the center. We got troops pushing four trains to the MG42. Gun the with the can here as well. And we still got Gun the defending the northern fuel pond here, keeping the Vickers there at bay. And Sex can seem to flank up behind here, noting no grenades. Red Wings, so that'd be quite effective. Of course, he might have planned just to rush ahead in terms of tech. Push for some armor as soon as possible, which would put Aihito in quite a bind. And there you go, he is rushing. And again, OT, he's at the eight minute mark and he's going for it. I mean, again, he did get so much more fuel than uh, Aihito in the early game, but even you know, didn't, he would still be able to do it reasonably fast. But that's really one of the things, you know, the things about the bridge would tend to get underestimated. But they have really, really efficient taking. And they don't exactly have a lot of tears. I mean, as the British, if you hit, you can really fast take up. If you fall behind, you can usually sort of catch up reasonably easy compared to most other factions. I do think that bit tends to get a bit underestimated with the Brits. Like, they can take up fast. Takes moving about here. MD42 setting up there as well. Mortar down here with the Gunner D squad. Noting our hero has been able to get enough munitions to get light machine guns either. Of course, that's another issue for our hero. I mean, not only has been denied fuel, he's been denied a massive amount of munitions, which makes it hard for him to gain any sort of lead there, or the infantry at least, you know, catch up with it with the Gunner So, I mean, there's a lot of troubles here for our hero. going for a second MD42 to help catch up with all this infantry. This is certainly admirable there for my hero, but even then, he is under a lot of pressure here. Noting Repnings hasn't gone for Doctrine yet, he's also got a bit of manpower floating, and there we go, got the 25 pounder guns flying off there. Against the machine gun there, shots flying through the air, crashing into the walls. And he just managed to get out of the nick of time before the entire thing collapses like a house of cards in a storm. Pack 40 out there for the Heatu, neither side is yet to commit to Doctrine, because I'm nervous they're going to do this. Not working out too well there for the Vickers machine gun. Not working out too well at all. But with the artillery there, he has managed to flash Aihito out of the village centre. Devastating the German machine gun nest there and gaining control. Laying claim to what is rightfully the Commonwealth's. Grabbing the point there. Troops to healing reinforcing. 
closing in some tanks soon enough. On this regard, I hit getting to both viewpoints. Does ensure that Ratmans can't easily pull from the Yamaman, which is of course quite lucky for I hit to otherwise he could already be now staying down in the center. But uh, he's going to need at least one more pack 40 because of Ratwing Stats rushes out of center, particularly due to the way the map is working. Like, he could easily get close to the pack 40, and like the center could just drive up to an enter tank and usually clear it out. A move, by the way, which will not gain you many friends if you do it. And again, if you're doing it, you're probably not looking to make friends, anyways. But a six pounder gun up here for Red Wings. He's, you know, taking stock of his opponent. He's not underestimating a hit to. He's taking him seriously. And wants to be sure to have at least some sort of counter while he pulls for something here. There you go, another 25 pounder gun absolutely barrage here. Quite cheap, by the way. 45 munitions there for quite a few cells there. And another house knocked out. Denying a hit to another position to which to fight from. Defending the northern field from there continually. He could actually consider taking up and trying to push for medium arm of his own. But there's still no doctoral choice here from Ahito. No red wings. Heavy fighting around the center. MD4 2's flame for machine guns and rifles all just going off in one sort of cacophony. Pioneer Squad now needs to mort that machine gun there, smoke it at the very least. And there you go, one Vickers pushed back. Close there, close, but the Vickers crew managed to evacuate the machine gun before it's fall into the hands of the Jerry's. Quite a bit of action there, no tech up for Hito. I mean, it's way too early for him to continue even playing for a Tiger tank, so that's definitely out of the options. And, like, problem is, most of his doctrine, you know, in some sense, if there are any armor callings, it's gonna be Tigers. You would be better, much better off, actually, now just playing for a, uh, you know, tier 4. Or tier, not tier 4, tier 3. I mean, he could go for tier 4, that wouldn't advise it. I'm just trying to push him with medium armor as soon as possible. A Panther 4 would be quite effective there. Got another trend pump with barrage. Or he taking his machine before he can even retreat. Church getting hammered. Oh, not church, but the cemetery there next to the church. Sapper spotted reports the S. Hyhido sends out a force on the side there to recapture the points there. Maybe try not flank Red Wings here in the southern edge of the village. And Ahito's finally taking up there. Morton needs to be repositioned, by the way. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Still, Ahito has been able to just bounce back here as a Red Wings is part of a scene and. Not too fully efficient start there, at least in my perspective. Take up happening there, section moving ahead. And we got Anvil Tactics. Weapon by a big fan of Anvil Tactics. He loves it, he loves going for Churchill tanks. Partly because you just get airburst shells for 25 pounder gun batteries, which of course makes them better. Sappers get you know upgrades to make them even tougher, plus give them a bigger K. A lot of other benefits. And we got a hit here with Assault Support. Got Noble Blitz. On a map like this in particular, I do think you should have at least gone for the, as soon as you can have the artillery field offs up. Because on a map like this, close quarters, the artillery field offs would be quite effective there if I hit it with his close quarters abilities. Ability to boost troops and of course lay down smoke screens as well. So I do feel like this is a bit of a miss there by hit to it. But still, getting more fuel, getting more munitions is generally never a bad idea. And the Opal Blitz is really cost efficient for it since it can essentially double as a fuel and a munitions cache. At the same time, at a point, if you put in a fuel point, it basically acts as two of them. Either way, you get twice as many resources out of any one point. And you actually do it for cheaper now. So the open blitz is pretty cost efficient. That really should not be taking much. And there we go, another trend pump on the barrage. Airburst shells going off. Fun fact, the Germans also had access to them. I know they actually used them for their Flak 88s, and even the 37 of Flaks actually had access to them, but beyond that, I'm not so sure about anything, but I imagine that more Flak 88s is also for regular artillery. So a few fun facts there, by the way. A few fun facts about airburst shells. Section now being pulsed by the Pioneers, going to be in as well here. Still, I hear to remain to control the fuel points. He's yet to build a Supporma Core. Don't tell me he's playing for... T no, he's not. He's building the Supporma Core there. Oh, is he? Oh, there you go. Just built it rather far away from the rest. Pushing out the center, then troops being repulsed there. The artillery observer section, there, if you will. Mines being laid down. Cut off hit there. Very good move by Red Wings. Still changing the machine and give it out. 
My hit results are not too far from the strength and can be used to lock down some of Red Wing's infantry movements by swiftly pinning it down. We also get a fuel cache up here for Red Wing, so he's only trying to ensure he gets more fuel, and of course, doesn't fall too far behind. I hear tonight he's got the over blitz out, of course, he can't catch up with the munitions advantage as well. Advantage, advantage, but you know, extra bit. Panzer 4 on the way there for Hitler, the Panzer Kampfwagenfeld arriving here for the 12th SS Hitler Jugend, so named because, well, its recruits were from the Hitler Jugend organization. So, drawn from there as a fun fact. Panzer 4 halfway down there for Hitler. We got Pioneers here versus Sappers, MP40 versus Sten Guns. The Sten Gun battle was an attempt at sort of creating a cheaper and more efficient sort of machine gun for the British. It was actually inspired by the MP40, which was in itself a very cheap and efficient sort of machine gun. Fun fact. At least by German standards, I suppose you call it cheap. Savage shooting through here. And there you go, Panzer Fort. So in this case. It's, I hit it and ends up with the tanks first, in part because Red Wings is aiming for the Churchill tank. He wants it, and of course, in a sense, he can get away with it. But that, of course, delays his armor response. But at the same time, with the Churchill out, I mean, the Panzer IV is not going to be much of a threat to the Churchill itself. Since it has a poor chance of penetrating the Churchill's armor. And on top of that, you know, the Churchill just has so much health, and even in the cases, you know, it actually penetrates the Churchill's armor. It's more than likely just be able to survive the hits and just take out the Panzer IV. So with this, I'm just going to need, you know, a lot more Panzer Fours, but preferably Stoops have a good chance versus the uh, Churchill, or theoretically, theoretically could take the Panthers. Noting that Red Wings has yet to commit to a doctrine, compared to I of course, with assault support. Sturm on Tustetong. Setting up for an assault to claim the Western fuel point away from the hands. I really think I should go for the artillery field officer. He's such an unutilized airmark unit. And Red Wings should go for a doctrine. I could recommend Commander Regiment, a very underutilized British art doctrine, but which I think is actually pretty good. I think it's probably one of my favorite British doctrines. Since it does require a bit more to put through, though it has been up improved a lot there compared to how it was, you know, before, and we'll get a few more buffs here with the smoke raid operation. But it's definitely one of the four more fun ones. I'm still sadly chain smoke raid operation. I like the old version more, to be honest. I like the old version more. Six pounder gun behind the Panzer IV. Churchill tank halfway down there for Red Wings. Second spread them for there. Go calling until you immediately here. And it's just a huge set of fireworks there from Red Wings. A little gift to the German army there. As he unleashes a concerto. Which I believe was actually also what the, the Americans at the very least called a artillery sort of bombardment on a certain level. Like they had different sort of code names for an artillery bombardment. There's like the Stonk Concerto and I can't quite remember the others. A little fun fact there. Nothing further there for Anhito. He can soon go for another Panzer IV though. The question is, would he anticipate? Well, he should have seen with the airburst shells that there's a Churchill inbound. But will he actually go for a counter or is he just going to go for more Panzer Fours? Nick is there. Victory Pond Vice. Actually, Ahedra in controls. I mean, Ahedra again has been able to stabilize nice, but I still think his start was not the most efficient. Not the most efficient, personally. Churchill, they're going through, going straight for the gun of the ears, trying to craft them, but they're a bit too fast. A bit too slippery. And there you go. Seeing the mighty church run to the field, I hit does respond with the Stug 3G early model. By the way, which you can tell from the gun mantle of the Stug, with the early model having more flat one, whereas the uh, later models would have a more sort of rounded one, which had a better chance of bouncing off shells. Machine gun under fire from the Pantrocon leaders need to fall back from the church soon enough. That house is not going to last long, and there you go, this was a machine, oh, section there, we got light machines up here for our heater, finding some upgrades there, and there you go, artillery on the grenadiers. Oh dear, he's not paying attention, he's not anticipating this, oh, there we go, there we go. Oh dear. 
And there you go, come to this retreat before they get wiped. And of course, Redmond can use this as so aggressively as he can because there's no friendly fire on that artillery. So he could literally be right under as airburst shells goes off and his men wouldn't take any damage, by the way. It's reinforcing. Still, I here to remain to control the resource point to an extent. Good for him. Let's good for Red Wings. Got a Raffin up north here, and that's going to force him to actually deploy the upper blitz once he captures the point here, by the way. And of course, I have to see if I hate the members to do it. Like, most players don't actually do that. They'll just never capture and then they'll forget about it, and they won't be getting the extra resources. Telemind sound there, good, good. Bit of quad here in the field, church will be fixed up. That ring still remains undoctrinated. There you go, straight to Gunnies with light machine guns waiting to give those Tommies a good reception. And Church Mods picks up the also not lacking a bit there, but we also got the heavy sappers up there for Red Wings. Slightly tough, and of course with the Vickers K, and in this case supported by the Churchill tank. But Red Wings remains uh, again without a doctrine. Armor being slowly rolled towards the well, ward off. Red Wings Armor Sort. And there you go, Doctor Choice. 8 command points, he goes for commandos, 12 minutes, 22 minutes, and he's got a fast map floating about there, that's definitely not good though, of course, he's planning calling commandos, obviously, you know, knock yourself out though, there we go, one glider in, one glider in, Panther falling back, keeping pursued by the Stuke and the Churchill tank, down to half health, Gunnies need to retreat, Stuke moving up, but there's still the anti tank to be careful of, Gunnies what quite a loss if I hit up, could go for the assault to replace, Floating himself, quite a bit of manpower, so he needs to go for it. And we got smoke being called down as well to screen up a lot of units here by the Red Wings. Further, just obfuscating the lines of fire here to make it much harder for him to defend. So really good use here of smoke break. And on top of the commanders and assault light, it's just one doctrinal party here from Red Wings. As everything just goes off. Pat got wiped there, but sex rushing up with grenade. No, oh, that's the commanders popping a grenade. Glider down already though. Chaos reigns in the meanwhile. Church with a heavy damage engine falling back. Panzer Force stuck. Can't see anything. Stuart hanging back here. And the tank in the way. Commanders taking losses. Enemy Fortune setting up right in front of the commanders. Gonna be suppressed. Oh dear. It's madness. Pandemonium. Gonna be about to get wiped out. Enter tank and wiped though. Enter tank and wiped. Could go after the Churchill now. Gonna be almost being wiped out. Stuart driving about. Not sure what to do. Panzer Force setting out. He might be setting up for a tiger chain. They'll be left. He's lost another gun. He's squad. He should go for replacements though. Getting an assault officer out. More smoke continues to rain down here from Red Wings as he fixes up the Churchill tank close to the front lines. And there you go. Tillery called in on the pack 40 to destroy it, denying a hit. He's going to still try it. He's still going to try it though. A hit is anything, and apparently an optimist. There's nothing that, and he's yeah forgotten about the other blitz. He's not getting the extra fuel or munitions, and we got another glider inbound from Red Wings. Two gliders. Is he gonna? La he's gonna land by in the same spot as the first one. The cheeky bastard. I hate to find him to replace the Gundiers. and there you go, second glider. Sending commanders to the death. I'm assuming Red Wings was a big fan of the deer parade. Do Panther unit repairs. Panzer gonna deal also running if I hit so finally some Panzer gonna deal. Far on the way then there you go and send the other around tang through the uh, paper mystery glider then in a matter of moments. That was some brutal stuff here, some brutal stuff. And not very often you get to see like several abilities, you know, being active at the same time like that, but Red Wings did it. He did it, boys. I'm sure we'll be getting a victorious cross for that one. For displaying gallant efforts 
Beyond the abilities of most British officers, we award you with the Victory Victoria Cross in the hopes that they actually start learning from you. Idiots. There you go, Panther 4 good to go. I do believe I hit was very much dead, certain the Tiger Tank that would help you if you set up the Obel Blitz properly. Your Heinz, yeah, when is he gonna figure out that you know, uh, not doing anything here? I don't know, and why am I talking to myself? Where are you, Fritz? Where are you? You said out you, you were going for, out for a leak. You've been out for hours. Pine, has been pushed out. You got the Firefly sending out there with commanders up there. No chill rockets for him, though. Stu not getting any repairs. And now the Stuke's stuck there as well, like the old Blitz. <laughs> Just forgotten. Bang really gets a sex. Ah! They almost sick kills on his own. Which is sort of funny again. I tell you, does a friend of mine, but the bunk grenades do. There you go, the Firefly flanking against the Pentagon, forcing it back. Pack 40 open up, and the Firefly is attempting to. And Churchill is on the move once more for a hitter. Another Pack 45 hitter. Even as he's getting close to the Tiger tank. Probably due to the Firefly there. Rolling up here with the Churchill tank. Back here, troops in reinforcing. Stu still forgot by here to alongside the upper blitz. There you go, tiger tank available. In theory, he just needs the fuel, which is not too long. The map on there might be a bit of a tricky issue here by here to finally getting the Stu back in action, and he's still not doing anything with the upper blitz, so he's not getting the fuel or the munitions. Twenty-one kills in the Panther Four. But double commander scores. That is quite a bit of uh, aggressive British chaps there for I hit her, and I hit her with Red Wings. I hit is the one who has to deal with them though. I hit has still forgotten about the Obel Blitz, and we got more to cover down. No, that's smoke raid operation. Smoke raid operation. Preparing for another assault here. And there you go. Boom. Preparation basically just screens up everything in line to get closer. And just assault I hit with it. Very easy. Artillery called in as well here. Panzer over positioning. Pack 40 is nearby, but the smokes make much harder for them to fire. Need the stoop down there. He's closing on the tiger tank, but it's going to be some time there. Command gets in advance, water fire rain down, grenades going off, machine gun almost wiped out, complete chaos and disorder reigns once more. As right wing just uses smoke rate operation to its fullest and nastiest effect here versus our hero. Losing packs and machine guns here to the British. There's a flank behind there, Panther fighting at the Firefly there, going hit with the Stook. Stook is almost down. Oh dear, he's gonna lose it, he's gonna lose it. And then it goes down despite its good armor, according to Relic. Church attack there, getting hammered by the pack 40, force to fall back here, laying down more smoke! More smoke! Is Red Wings a military tactician or a magician? Depending on that smoke, it's hard to say. Second pack 40 recruit. I hit his lines, uncomplete and out of disarray there. But he's close to the Tiger Tank. But can the Tiger Tank save him now? Bits of glider there are well gliding away. Very aggressively. Very close to the Vector 2, but now right wings control the fuel. He's controlling the munitions. Getting 42 fuel per minute now compared to the 7 of a hit up. Nick two points wise, it's also an art rep with a very, very tiny advantage over here too. Reinforcement healing. Tiger tank is about a minute and a half away there for here to a minute and a half, oh, and maybe 10, 20 seconds. Because they're being a one fuel point recaptured, Panther 4 fixed up, whole blitz still not being redeployed. Might be that he does not aware you actually have to do that, he just doesn't care. I mean that's a possibility as well. Enemy Can't rule out anything. There we go. 
Less than a minute to go before I can get the tiger. Less than a minute. Roughly half a minute. Roughly. Actually a bit more than that, I think. 40, 50 seconds. Big two points, why is it slowly taking out? Then we get a big push here with the double commanders and the section was the pentagon. They just need to retreat. They do not stand a chance with that many commanders, not without a tank or a machine gun to back them up. Yet I hear they're still going to try and survive sort of for time here. He should just retreat. He should just retreat. He isn't. There we go. He retreats. Rushing the Panther 4 down there. 26 kills. Very, very, very close to Victory 2. Of course, the big question is, I hit him might just benefit from going for more Panther Fours, so particularly with the Firefly about, which is going to be much better dealing with, you know, a single big tank than it's going to be, you know, dealing with numerous tanks. There you go, far from something, getting the Panther Four, Gaining Veteran 2, but has to fall back, has to fall back. Zurück fallen. Almost lost it there. Pack 40 is moving in, until he called in in a nearby house. And losing control of the resource area there again. Churchill almost got to go there once more for Red Wings. Panthers have been forcing over Blitz. Really should redeploy. He might even be able to get enough initiative to you next. Maybe use some strafing runs that way. Break up some of uh, Red Wings' moves. There you go. Bun grenade obviously ambushed the gun. He said by the victory point. Clever move there by Red Wings. Devastating as well. Heading for the center victory point, even is being suppressed, he doesn't care, he has to push forwards for Germany. And he's sending in the pentacle just to scout for any further commanders. Tiger tank finally arrives here for here to at the 32 minute mark. He's finally able to call it in. Now would he be able to turn the tide against the Tommies? Against the British. Almost got the Vic is there though. Almost got the veteran three Vickers. Peg Forge ready to blast any Tommy tanks apart. Any forward there trying to be flanked here with the Sappers, but moves in there. We got the Panther Force as well. And the Tiger tank. Sap, or oh, section of pressure on the ice. There you go. Steals a flame from it. There you go. Takes it over and hits, sending both Terrence and Lawrence, well, dead into the realm of Hades. And there you go. Almost got the section there. Wiped entirely. Tiger tank there. We're still with two kills. Pack 40 moving in. Trying to get that Firefly. But the Firefly is way too fast there. Easily dodges the packs. Grand points in the south. Moving for the center as well. Retmus should easily go for Morama. Now he can go for another Firefly. Another Churchill here. Versus Ahido if he wants to. Tiger tank advanced. Supported by the Pack 40s. Grand the center victory point. Over Blitz. Still forgotten. And we can see the Red Wings committing to a second Firefly, a second Sherman of EC as it was sort of actually known. Firefly sort of more of a post-war name, I think at least the name that's slowly called on close to that. Need to be careful that it's about sending a Saga on his own. That's definitely something that can be dangerous. Found the center victory point. Put ceiling reinforcing. I hear to very much looks contained here by Red Wings at the moment. Now, what will I hear to go for next? Stug, Ostwind, another Panther 4. Bunkers, maybe? Ooh, setting up to defend the southern points quite well. And there you go, commander straight into the Tiger Tank. Machine guns, gun it is, line of fire. Casualties swiftly piling up for the poor chaps. Punch strikes up, he definitely wants to knock out this firefly and put as much damage into the church as he can. But I imagine this is going to happen undercover. Smoke rate, actually, smoke rate operation won't work too well with the fireflies unless he's using something as bait and then flanking with the fireflies because the smoke would, you know, line up and close up the lines of fireflies. Fireflies. I suppose you could just use the smoke one spot and then again flank with them, which is an option. It looks like it's just going to be some old school flanking. You could also use more to cover instead. 
to support neutralizing support Enemy weapons infantry here from my hit and looks like there's gonna be something like that basically attack with here then attack I think with the main push here no he is going for smoke raid operation he is going for it he could of course combine him with assault but he's gonna set in there we go tiger shoots gets a good hit there smoke raining down though and he is flying with machine guns, light guns. There you go. Pops assault, pops assault. Tiger shoots attack round, takes out tele commanders. Chanks flanking in here. Packs being obscured here with the smoke. Panther 4 there. Oh, trying to go in for them. We got there. You go. Assault in as well there. Troops rushing right past. Panther almost down. Pa grenades going off in the pack force. They can't range in properly. Fire flash just rolling up close as they can. Pack down already. Panther gonna these can't fire the Panthers. Oh, they don't have an attack round option there. Machine gun there suppressing troops as well. Pack down to half. Oh. Churchill down to half. They've almost got the firefly there. Tiger tank rolling up. Almost got one of the fireflies. Don't know trying to recruit the pattern there. Got one Churchill down. A firefly down. Not the Churchill though. Tiger tank almost knocked out here already. Taihito Sender's being devastated here by Red Wings. Shot bounces off the Tiger's front's Lama. Could try and panzer fast, but don't think that's going to wag out. And there you go, Tiger down, Firefly still operable, and more importantly, Churchill is still operable. And uh, he just got nothing to stop it with now. And there you go, GG, game over, a loss for Hito, a victory for Red Wings, a victory for the Commonwealth. A, I would say, excellent display here with the power of the smoke radar breaks. I think a really underutilized British ability here. Good use of assault, good use of the commanders, just reasonable good use of the doctrine role, good use of the church and everything else here the British have to offer. But certainly, I think in some cases, gets to see a lot less usage, like the commanders as well. So, I mean, really good play there. I hear, I think, again, A, had a weaker opening here, but also B, I think, at times, forgot to sort of pressure weapons from other sides. And at times, again, O folks in the center rather than the resources. And the problem, again, thinks you just push more Panzer Force than the Tiger Tank. Then maybe they didn't go full up with the Tiger Tank or something like that. But uh, the time there felt a bit off, I hear, to be honest. Mines would also, I think, benefit more. And of course, Getting that over blitz properly reset up, they would also benefit our here to a ton. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe, tell a friend, share it where you want. If not, send a new clone apart some feedback in the comment section. Also, a big thanks to Steel Select for donating and supporting the propaganda cast, allowing me to help keep making all of these wonderful videos. So this is Impel Day signing off. See you all another time. Another video. Cheers, everybody.